<sighs> hello, everybody. morning. Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. No coffee right now, just so you know. I'm actually brewing some water right now so I could add it to my coffee. So I was thinking about when I was in the 90s and it's it was all, you know, the Bay Area is like free love. Everyone does whatever, right? And a lot of dating going on, a lot of clubs, a lot of fun stuff. And on, you know, the like 10 years or so after the AIDS virus scare. And so you hear about, oh, you got to protect yourself. You have to wear a condom, foam, get tested all the time just to make sure. Da, da, da. And I'm just like, you know, I'm not going to go get tested for AIDS. I'm not going to do that. I don't see a point. I mean, I don't want to know. That's really what my whole thing was. Is I didn't want to know because I knew that once I knew I had something that they deemed was deadly, that I would have to do so many things that I was didn't want to do. And I saw what people went through when they were going through all the different treatments. And so I'm like, you know, if, if I get it, then I get it and I'll deal with it as it comes. And I'll wait for my body to break down. And my body never did break down. And you know, anytime there's been a scare of some kind of virus or some kind of disease in the population, You've been exposed to it. Why is it that you don't get the disease and other people do? Well, because they were at the end or they had, they were over capacity. And when you're over capacity and you have a closed system, then you have infection. And that infection then ravages a person exponentially. And there's different names for those different diseases for that. So then I'm thinking like, okay, then they're like, oh, well, you should go and get tested for women should go get mammograms and everyone should go get tested for this and for that and to make sure they don't have cancer. And I'm just like, now I understand why they want you to do that. Well, there's two schools of thought. Now we've developed another arm of the Hydra, which means that if you start feeling your predisposed issues, you have to change the way you eat. You have to pull out the old programming. Okay, when you start feeling stuff, because as soon as you get tested for something, then you're going to be faced with the fear of what you you think you may have or may, what you may think you may end up with. And then you start attacking your evolution. You start attacking it. And this whole early detection thing, it take, you take, take a person who is completely healthy and they have some kind of mass, whatever it is. And they don't change the way they eat. They don't pull out the older programming. And then what do they do? They go under oncology. And when you go under oncology, what would look like a perfectly healthy person on the outside, they might have something growing on the inside, but that's their evolution. You have just now destroyed a perfectly healthy person who had every bit of potential in the world. You just de destroyed their potential by doing early detection. Oh, but then you, you know, but that's the thing. You have to figure out which side of the world you want to stand on. You want to be in the cured side where you just live out one life with your one programming and, and you don't want to have any break in your stride. You're not, you don't want to change anything really when you think about it, then fine, do your early detection, go and take something out or go and attack something oncologically and then maybe you're gambling. You hope that you, your, your one life that you've been given will give you enough mileage for you to achieve all your goals that everyone expects people to achieve during their one lifetime. Or what I should have done when I first started realizing my PMS and all my predisposed issues from who knows what, when, where it came from, whether it was developed during my time here, you know, in, in America, or was it something that my parents gave me? I should have broke my food down. I should have been pulling out the programming. I should have dealt with every predisposed issue and dealt with my pneumonia that they gave me so many antibiotics for back in 1975, 1976, when I had pneumonia as a baby. But hindsight's 2020. You, there's no way you could possibly say well, what I should have done. Now that you know, now that you know, now people who have been alluded to this information can potentially change the course of their life and change the direction of where they're, where they, where they want to go. Because now you have a choice before you didn't, before you're like, oh God, cancer is so scary and go get tested early and then go get things scooped out and cut out and, and attacked. And then some people live a long time and other people 
deteriorate and the cancer comes back or another disease comes back or another disease develops because of the fact that the root cause is you have a closed immune system, you're not breaking your food down and you don't understand offspring. You don't understand that when you are in a diverse world such as this society where you have everyone and their mother giving you all of their spit and maybe you're having sex with them, maybe you're not, you are developing exponential offspring, colony forming units of diverse types of microbes that eventually will metastasize and turn into something crazy and that's why we have the aging process. And so with my dog, with my dog, it's like she's getting stronger by the fact that I'm feeding her all this bioavailable food and so I'm getting a system put in place and that system is, yeah, I have a lot of backup food and so that way I can keep making sure that when I run out of jars that I can keep making more and I know what I need to put into it, you know, some meat and milk and, and whatever I have in the house that is friendly for dogs that's not too aggressive as far as spices. And and it's just feeding her little babies because if she wanted to eat solid food, she would. Though last night I did give her a piece of my string cheese and she ate it all. I tried to give her another piece thinking like, oh God, I got to go buy string cheese because she'll eat that. But then she's like, eh, nah. But she did eat the string cheese and she chewed on it. Okay, but nowadays, I mean, she sometimes chews on her bones, but really she is gravitating towards the the meat and the milk in the formula form. And I'm adding that RX milk RX supplement from you know from the uh, from Chewy and which is a powder like a like a Similac. And I, I do put the either Gerber or I put in the Rachel Ray's stuff in the blender. And I also put in the pedigree food, the pedigree meat chunks, the high protein, because she needs to have a thick shake. Because her poops are coming out, yes, um, a little pasty, which is fine, but they are coming out. And they're really, they're really stinky and smelly, and that's perfectly great. I want them to be stinky and smelly because what she was putting out a couple, like before Thanksgiving, when she was pooping in her sleep, pooping, you know, in the house and whatever, it smelled like semen. It smelled weird. Now it smells like life. Now it smells like life is, is developing inside of her and finding a way to transition. But before she was eating food that wasn't doing anything for her children's cells, but it was doing something for her parents' cells, but it wasn't keeping her alive. Okay, so the poop has to keep you alive. All right, hold on. Oh, oh. I'm still a little bit sore, just so you know. My legs are sore, but I gotta have some coffee. Mm. Oh, that looks so good. All right, so. You know, so her poops are definitely different, and that's why you have to be really understand. You have to, you, have to, you can't be afraid of poop. You really can't, because that will tell you everything about what your body's releasing, how your biochemistry is is processing the foods that you're eating. Um, I'm telling you, poop is everything. It really is, and to be made afraid of poop means that you're made afraid of your own programming, and then you're giving your body away to science, and then they do whatever they want to you, and then when you think about it. Beautiful people are alive. Smart people are alive, and they don't realize that some of them die suddenly. Some of them go through the agony of diagnosable conditions that the system can't really fix because the system is not teaching you how to pull out the programming and feed your body correctly. And so when you think about how many people are there in the world that are, that are like, you're like, wow, I can relate to them. They are a person. They are human. They're not some weird entity that that is that isn't human that we think sometimes like way back you know maybe 40 years ago that hollywood stars and our government you think of them as inhuman and think of them as reptilians or think of them as some kind of weird you know alien creatures and so you don't have a connection to them you don't have a relationship to them but then when you think about humans today like the the, the royalty all the hollywood stars even high levels of government they're just people a very smart people that have access to amazing information that I'm finding out myself through incrementally. But but they are human and, and when a human 
isn't given all the opportunities in the world to figure out how to redirect their life, whether they just keep their one life and enjoy it and say, hey, thank you for your service, or redirect and give birth to themselves, then you're like, man, you know, that's that's the suffering. That's the suffering, okay? That's the suffering that doesn't have to be, but then you have to give people the choice, and we're giving people the choice, and then you choose whatever you want. And so it's just like, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's so, it's so weird now how connected we really are to everyone. And just because someone happens to be extremely smart in one area, doesn't mean that they're not susceptible to a diet suddenly or to the agony of dying from a disease. Of course they are. Of course they are. But you know, we, we don't really have, like humans, really, when you think about it, don't really have a connection to everybody. They just, they think of themselves as less than or better than somebody else. Because of all the programming in Hollywood and politics, religion, and scientific dogmas. And so when you think about, you know, that all you need is to pull out the programming, the old programming, and that all you need is food. You don't need anything else and that suffering that is because of you wanting to deal with your predisposed issues, that's going to make you stronger. Then it's so easy to stay alive in our society when you've conditioned yourself to go through the hardships of it. That's, that's what it comes down to. It's really easy once you condition yourself. And I'm telling you, conditioning yourself for life, conditioning yourself for hardship, conditioning yourself to change and be okay with change, whatever it is. You know, I mean, I had to get used to my dog changing. I had to get used to just everything that's changed since Thanksgiving. I wasn't anticipating this. I was anticipating that I would get my house all done up perfectly and and have the energy for that. I was not anticipating the frequencies to be as exponential as they are. I mean, I knew they were going to be, but I didn't really realize how aggressive they were going to be. I didn't realize how they were going to affect me. I didn't realize, yeah, that I had to go and now bring my dog back to life from basically death. And that, you know, her little mass that she has inside, that's her power pack. That's her spirit animal. That's her. And we all have some of those in our body. And that's why they're like, oh, early detection. That's why be very careful when the medical system says, oh, yeah, go get early detection. Because that will imply that you will destroy your evolution. See, when you put yourself in the medical holistic system, they're going to find every way possible to destroy your future potential. Hey, John, nice to see you, John Oaks. Okay, that's why it's so imperative you understand that when you do put yourself in the medical and holistic system, they will destroy your every potential. You have to actually ask them to help you realize your evolution. Even though that's not their purview, that's not what they want to do, that's not even what they're trained for. They're trained to take away every single potential opportunity you have to evolve yourself past this current lifespan. And so, you know, when I said, well, if I was you and I was under a doctor's care, I would ask my doctor how to pull out the poop and how to understand my rectum, how to understand my sphincter. I would ask my doctor how to how to, how to reassure me that I'm not going to die from a preventable disease, that I would have every opportunity to live, not die from whatever, and that all I need to do is eat all food, break it down, not eat the eat, eat the food that that is like in its in its solid form in the state, like you know, like in the steak or like when you when you go to a hospital and they give you here here's some oatmeal and here's like a big old steak and here's a sandwich and here's all this and you have cancer, and you're being given these these solid foods that you wouldn't give to a baby. No, the, the medical system is not trying to birth you. They're trying to just keep the adult alive, but destroy your future evolution and then allow your body to deteriorate um, relatively pain-free as much as they can until they can't cure you anymore. That's what the medical holistic system does. Okay? And so now how can we say, okay, how can we change the course of medicine, revolutionize medicine? When you ask the doctor to have a wing of the hospital, a wing of their practice to be, to then help you stay alive, not make your life be easy on the way out the door. But how did, how did they reassure you that here, eat some food, you're okay, you're not going to die, you're, you know, that's what you want your doctors is to reassure you that they're not going to make your life easy on the way out the door, that, that you want to actually now live. 
And maybe that is possible, maybe that isn't possible. I don't know. But that's the thing is that when you do go through the medical holistic system, they are taking away your future potential. They might keep you alive for a certain amount of time and make your life a little bit easy. That's all the gifts and the curses and the spells. That's all in the medical system. Gifts, curses, and spells. You give your own gift to yourself of life. You give your own gift to yourself of balance. Depend upon somebody else to give you the gift of life and balance and whatever and, 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 and talent. That's then signing a contract with the devil. That's like getting a Christmas present for free. Oh, nothing's for free, honey. There ain't nothing for free in this world. You've got to earn every single bit of your existence. Though things may seem like it's for free. Oh, I'm paying a little, I'm paying only this much in insurance so I can go to the doctor and do what? So they can take everything out of you? <laughs> and then take your proteins and use it for the next generation? Use your proteins for science? That's what people do when they put themselves in the medical holistic system. They're not prolonging their life. They're just giving their proteins for the next prototype that's going to be under the same kind of thing that you're under. Wondering if you're going to live or die from your preventable diseases. And asking for reassurance from a system like the medical holistic system that can't reassure you and guarantee you that they're, they're going to keep you alive. Because they're not, they can't, obviously. They're, the morgue is the end result. But when people are under a doctor's care, and they've been under a doctor's care for so many years, now they want the doctor to speak a different tune. Now they want the doctor to reverse everything they ever did as far as the cures and the oncology. And maybe they can't do it. And so then what you have to do is you have to keep pulling out the programming out of your own freaking alimentary canal once your body makes it available. That's the thing. So some of you are on prescription drugs. You can't just get off your prescription drugs. You can't just get off your different, you know, addictions, whatever they are, whether it's cannabis or alcohol. You can't just, just cold turkey. No, it has to be a systematic programming of releasing the old programming and developing now undamaged cells, replicating undamaged cells. Because what happens in a closed system, people replicate damaged cells and they, and they're eating food that is not bioavailable to the new babies that are trying to become the undamaged cells to be the new prototype. And so you're feeding the damaged children in your body and you're feeding the damaged parent. And then what happens when you feed damage, replicate damage, you get more damage. And so now it's time that you have to realize that you have to transition. And so you have to feed for two. That's for everybody. You have to feed for two. And you have to pull out the programming systematically, pull out the addictions out of your ass, literally. That's how people can get off their prescription drugs. It's over time. That's how people can get off their addictions, whether it's alcohol or cannabis or anything else. And then down the road, cannabis can be used to enhance you, but you'll still have to pay. But at least you'll understand that pain is the body re, uh, pushing out the old world. Because when you smoke pot, you develop new little babies, new awesome innovation. And then the old world has to go. And then so if you, if you smoke so much pot, then you're going to have a lot of, what do you call, pain. Because that's a lot of evolution. It's a lot of pushing out the old world and bringing in the new world. And then you keep rebirthing yourself. And that's how you can use certain things in the future once you get rid of the damaged cells in your body. And again, you can't just do it with a detox. You can't do it with a surgery. You can't even do it with, you know, dieting. It's a systematic thing. You have to allow your body to go and find the anomalous programming and pull it out of its area and then siphon it to your colon so that way you have the ability to go and pull it out and get it out. Because again, traditional bathroom habits are not going to be enough. I'm telling you. And we had climate change yesterday. I mean, we've been having climate change the last couple of days, some aggressive frequencies. That I even felt. I mean, I still hear, I heard a little ringing today. But uh, the, the the pain of, and why is it that my body's sore? Because my hands were sore last yesterday. Because I'm doing this repetitive motion. I'm, I'm pumping food in my dog, okay? Using that bottle. Like I'm trying to make it go faster because <laughs> I don't want to be there all day. Your herd's going, just sucking a little bit. So I had to cut off the tip of the nipple to make the stream of food to go faster. But then she finds a way to 
cut off the stream sometimes because it does a bit of action. So then she lets her breathe for a minute and then she brings in the stream again. And so then I'm pumping too to, so she doesn't just cut it off altogether because I got to get food in her. I got to beat the little fucking demons in her. Okay. So that's why my hands are hurting because I'm doing repetitive motion and then I'm squatting. So my ass hurts, my ass muscles, my leg muscles, my thigh muscles, my shin or my calf muscles. And that's really that, 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 that is what hurts right now because I'm evolving. I'm getting used to this new lifestyle. Okay. And I'm also systematically pulling out the old programming. I had a bunch of leftover stew. I had a bunch of macaroni and cheese yesterday. I had, you know, nuts and I don't know what else I had. I had, oh yeah, cookies, <laughs> cookies and frosting. Okay. And so I make sure I, I'm very well fed and that's, and that's the thing. And so then today I made a bunch of the backup food for my dog. So that way I don't have to keep making food all the time, but if she's drinking about a pint, a meal, so she could be drinking about a quart a day, give or take, if I, if, on a good day, a quart a day, that's good for her. And then I'm also helping her release the old programming. Because, because, you know, I don't want her to get backed up. Eventually she'll poop on her own, like, like, but I need to make sure that while she's going through this process that I encourage that stuff to go. So expressing her anal glands is what I'm kind of doing daily, which is fine because it's helping her release. She's not, because I remember when her going around in circles, it was because she couldn't get the poop out. So she'd have to go in circles and circles and circles and circles, and then she would get the poop out. I mean, I would walk her every so often, but it wasn't enough sometimes. So now I'm training her body to get the poop out like on a daily basis right now, but it's still, we're in training mode. She still has a bunch of babies inside of her. Okay. And so I'm giving birth she, I'm giving birth to a new to a new sugar to a new dog. So people say life is short. Okay, maybe your old life is short because it depends on the frequencies, but you can still rebirth yourself. But you have to understand you got to pull out the programming. You have to give life to your body. And also drinking mineral water is not a bad thing to calm things down. That's again why they mineralize the the, the public utilities. Because the hydra are so full of life, they're so energetic. And that's why people are suffering from disease and pain right now because they have so much life in their body that they haven't managed it correctly. And it became a problem. You can have too much life in your body and that it becomes a problem. And some of the life is your, in your body is damaged. When you have damaged life in your body, they will torture the fuck out of you. And people are going through the torture right now and they are in agony. And that's why people are, are going and flocking to the medical, the holistic system, getting their surgeries getting all their detoxes, getting everything under the sun to try to calm down the life. But you know how you calm down the life? Well, first you got to, you have to manage your life and, and take away some of the excess life that is working against you. And then you have to feed the life in your body and then also give them a, a few minerals so they can calm down a little bit. Okay. And so I'm not trying to take away anyone's pain, but there's a way to manage the life in your body so it doesn't work against you and also cannibalize you and make you supernova and glitch, which is happening right now all over the world. And so, yeah, you, you, we, we have been psychologically, you know, psyoped. The whole campaign against fluoride in the tap water, that was a whole fucking psychological operation. That was, that was a psychological operation. Mineralizing the, the public utilities is the best thing, really. Okay, I'm not saying that well water isn't bad. I'm not saying purified water isn't bad, but purified water means that you're taking away the minerals. Distilling your water, taking away the minerals. It's not dead water now, it's alive water. And it's water that's going to be so aggressive for some people. And so we had it backwards. When we were distilling a water and then adding salt and minerals to it, we were just putting it right back in and, and wasting our money on distillers, wasting our time and energy in distilling water or buying distilled water. 
when we're just putting the minerals right back into the freaking water with the cabbage and the kale and the salt and the minerals, the pink salt. But then why, Jillian, did you change from pink salt to white salt? Now you went to extreme energy. Because a lot of people were over-mineralized and they need to release some minerals and they need to release some of the demons. And so then once you unclog your body of all the crap, you're not going to need that much J juice. I'm telling you, J juice is, is very, you don't need, you don't even need that much. People don't need that much. What you really need to understand is, is your own sphincter. I'm pulling out the programming. You don't want to be using aggressive elements through your mouth at all. You need to understand your body. You need to cough and sneeze and blow your nose. You got to exercise and get everything pushed through. And that means that you have to develop a force, develop muscles up here. And coughing and sneezing and blowing your nose is the best way. And so when you sneeze and you fart, that's a good thing. When my dog sneezes sometimes, she farts, I'm like, yay. That's a good thing. Okay? So. And so, yeah, fermented milk and meat, that's life. That's giving life. And it's also giving life to the body to release. Because now my, my dog's system is open. She can handle the life that's in a fermented uh, fish. Because, yeah, I would leave the, the fish and the milk and the meat in that formula on the counter. But then it would, it would start expanding and leaking everywhere. And then it would happen even in the fridge with my pint jars because I would fill it to the top. Didn't realize that they also ferment in the fridge. And then I see all this stuff leaking. I'm like, what the hell? And then I'm like, oh, shit. And then I look at the top. It looks like, you know, stalactites or stalagmites because it's all like cultured. It's all cultured like butter at the top of the, of the, top of the jar, the lid. And so that's when I was doing a bunch of just re-chemicalizing, doing some different chemistry, adding some milk and adding more stuff and leaving room for the t at the top so it can grow. And so my dog can handle the life. She can handle the life of fermented meat, milk. She can handle fermented uh, fish. She can handle this life. And then her body also can release. Because she definitely pees. She definitely poops. Even if I have to help her out. If I were to just leave her alone and let her poop on her own, nah. I want to make sure that stuff is out until, until, until she gives birth to herself. Now, this is why I posted about how long does, how long are dogs pregnant? They're pregnant for like 58 days. Will it be 58 days before that little egg in her hatches and then becomes her again, becomes her? I mean, I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen. I'm not saying or even, I'm just putting it out there that, okay, dogs, gestation is 58 days as far as puppies. Humans, obviously it's nine months. I'm sure for every disease that you have, you add nine months to your birthing process. Every disease that you know about, every single issue that you know about. And if you have a lot of antigen antibody programming, like your type A and type B, that's a lot of different diverse lives that have to then finally become part of you. And so you add probably nine months to every single potential disease that you may have as far as your type, blood types, as far as even your genetic predisposed, predisposed issues. So if I had just had PMDD and that's the only thing I know about, maybe I could have, I, I, I was not, I mean, I never diagnosed was never diagnosed with PMDD, but I did diagnose myself, but I was diagnosed with pneumonia. So yeah, nine, nine months, about a year to deal with that pneumonia. Man, that was during COVID. All the little things, the headaches and the little things I felt the last couple, the last like six years, it was just little colony forming units that are bursting and then leaving the body. But the main ones that I really had to deal with, the root cause of everything, was the last couple years and pneumonia. And that probably was the nine month gestation of going through the hives, the headaches, the coughing, all of that. Okay. And the lymph nodes. I mean, that's the body releasing and giving birth to itself. 
Yeah, yeah, it was about nine months. So what will, with my dog, will she be, will she, will that thing finally become her undercarriage and not so hard? And it, it is hard on one end and then it's soft on the other end. So I know it's, it's becoming softer. How long will that, will it take for that thing to finally assimilate to her? <clears throat> I don't know. And so we're, we're, again, we're in uncharted territory and my dog is doing fine. And so it is all about the food. And yeah, she, when she was really, when she was at the beginning of this stage of giving birth to herself, she was gimpy. She's becoming stronger. But yeah, she was gimpy. I thought she had a luxating patella, but nope, that seems to correct itself. Which I knew. I knew you just had to release the damaged cells. That's what, what happens with paralysis or any kind of issue that animals or humans go through. They have damaged cells in their body that are stuck in their colon. When you replicate damage, all you get is damage. You've got to release the damage and then finally become whole again. Release all that trauma. That trauma is damage. People don't. They pride themselves to keep all that stuff in. And they take their anti-inflammatories to prove it. They take their, their, they take the jelly juice to cure themselves. And so they keep the damaged cells inside. But I thought jelly juice gave you the waterfalls. Yeah, you can be peeing out a bunch of salt water and everything else stays inside. People are like, well, I don't understand that I did waterfalls last night, but then the next morning I pooped. How was that? Because eventually you cure yourself. Okay, when you do so much of the J-Juice, you will cure yourself. You have to finally pull out the programming. You have to train your body to push everything through. you got to cough and sneeze and blow your nose, like, really hard. I'm going to tell you, when I was blowing my nose so hard a couple, like, maybe six months ago, I was, I was breaking blood vessels. Sometimes it happens like that. But remember, food is what repairs you. Releasing the damaged cells is what's going to save your life but not through aggressive means. The jelly juice just wakes shit up. The jelly juice says finally it activates your immune system. And let me tell you, when you have when you have predisposed issues, you know, cardio your vital organ predisposed issues and you have things that were eaten away at your vital organs in the body or you have so many colony forming units that are that are like inside your blood and then you activate your cardiovascular system and your circulatory system and your body now is going to push all that jets them and plots them through, some people experience energetic events. Well, you had that shit inside of you that was just sitting there waiting to freaking attack you and destroy you at some point. Now you've preempted, now you've moved those, those floating colony forming units. You've moved them and you survived your energetic events. People did. When people activated their immune system and they woke shit up, they activated not only the good guys, but also the bad guys. But there's still you. You're the good guy and you have enough in you. So as long as you're not like in hospice, taking drinking apple or pineapple juice to keep everything inside. But if you're not in hospice and you're just dealing with a condition, you have what it takes to push everything through your bloodstream and then out of your fucking colon. So it doesn't terrorize you anymore. But people are afraid of the energy. They were told you're going to die. Yeah, when you're so decrepit, that's what they've. That's why they've demonized the suffering and demonized pain because they let you get so bad that yeah, people die from heart attacks and strokes. Because when you look at a person who is elderly, who hardly is anything to them, or they're so obese, like super obese, and they're elderly, they won't have what it takes to deal with the body releasing unless they're being overseen by a doctor that can manage and use machines as a backup measure in case certain things go offline for a minute. But, you know, would I recommend the JJ world for someone who is like 80 or 90 years old? Unless they're under a doctor's care that's willing to have all the backup measures in place and that the person has what it takes to deal with the pain of release. And the pain of cell regeneration. The pain of giving birth to themselves. 
But what is an elderly person? Someone who's 80 or 90 or someone who is in hospice? A person in the hospice, well, if they're under a doctor's care and the doctor finally said, okay, we're going to feed you now bioavailable food. We're going to take everything that's, that's, that you would eat if you were 30 years old and relatively healthy, put it in a blender and feed you. And then make sure that you would get the, pro the old program and the old damaged cells out of your ass. And they kept you under under observation and, and, and round the clock care. Fuck yeah, a doctor could bring a hospice patient back to life. They're the ones that cause them to go into hospice to begin with by giving them all the anti-inflammatories and surgeries and pills and powders and supplements and detoxes. Of course, a doctor can reverse everything if they did everything the opposite that they did to begin with. But no, doctors are not paid to do that. They're only paid to take you down, not build you up. And so that's the issue with the medical system. They are not paid to build you up. They are built, they are built, <laughs> literally, they are built to take you down. <laughs> they, yeah, they, they are built to take you down. Notch by notch by notch at your own asking. Oh, yeah, and you see it all over the place. Oh, God, I can't wait for my pharmaceuticals. I can't wait for my doctor to do me this. Okay. People can't wait to pass away. That's just so crazy. That's the, ir the irony about what's going on. That's the Hippocratic oath. Hypocrisy is when <laughs> you want to live, but you can't wait to pass away. You can't wait to be addicted to drugs. You can't wait for your surgeries. You can't wait to get that rest and peace. And that's the irony of those in the medical holistic system. They're the ones that are trying to save everybody, but they save people to death and then say, we saved you. See, that's, oh God. And so, so I, I just, but that's diversity. But again, you know, I'm just another, another arm of the Hydra. I'm just another arm of the Hydra. And that's exactly why my book is the why it's called Another Arm of the Hydra, because I can't convert people to think this way. They either will or they won't. They either save their own life or they ask the system to take them down notch by notch. And people are, and that's fine. Good for them. More food for me. More food for me, more more space for me. If, if you want to pass away and have your kids pass away prematurely, hey, that's fine. I can't talk you out of that. I can't, but you got to know you have a choice that everything that was done to you can be reversed with food and with releasing the programming. Everything that you asked for can be reversed that ended you up being tortured by your tortured in body, mind and spirit can be reversed. But it would mean that you'd have to feel pain and you'd have to feed it and you'd have to change your lifestyle and belief system, the way you talk, the way you think, the way you act. <laughs> and it's like watching Pinocchio and really Pinocchio, people say Pinocchio it's about human trafficking, child trafficking, but really Pinocchio is about adults, adults puppeteering the children to be great or be destructive. That Geppetto was the representation of you as the parent that are either going to foster an amazing child, an amazing evolutionary child, or foster a child that will be destructive to themselves and the, and then the environment. And and there's a lot of influences out there that will tempt your child to go away from the safety. And there are a lot of temptations out there. There are a lot of nefarious people out there in the world that will tempt you and your children in your body, as well as your children in your household, to do things that are detrimental to them in society. And so in a lot of ways, Pinocchio is a representation of cancer disease and chronic illness and how and which direction that you want to take your children your microbial babies as well as your children in your household that they could be lost to temptation and then premature destruction or they could build themselves up to be amazing but that's the thing is that all allegory can be taken any way you want to take it and relative to what you're focusing on, that's how you will characterize the allegory. And so if you're focusing on child trafficking and all the nefarious shit in society, then you'll look at Disney and everything else. It's all nefarious and bullshit. If you look at Disney saying, hey, 
we have given you all these gifts and spells and curses, and you've taken them freely. We've given, we've shown you what could, what could happen on the inserts, whatever, with the inserts of this and the inserts of that, and you still do it. I'm going to go take care of my dog. You're the one that chose. So it's how you look at things. It's not, there's no absolutes. All right, bye.